Welcome to another Sounds of ERA podcast. My name is Edward Johnson, a.k.a. Eddie, and I'm the president of InfoEd International. I'm here today with Hilda Alagian. She is from the University of Vermont, and she is a grants resources specialist. And she's been there for about 11 years. Hello, Hilda. Hi, Eddie. Good to talk with you today. Are there scenarios, you got me thinking a little bit about, you know, the universities, I guess, in general would always encourage investigators to go seek out funding. But I know a lot of the agencies, especially the non-feds, they don't offer a lot of indirect costs, or in some cases, none. Does your, What's your university's take on that? I mean, I guess in some sense, yeah. some money is better than no money, but there's also been a philosophy in some places that I've seen where the cost of doing research. So they say, well, even if you pay my directs, it's costing me money to support this research. So if I don't get my overhead, I'm losing money. And and how does your university approach that? Is that a factor? Because I know a lot of these programs, when they show up in these databases, will indicate what kind of overhead and things you may be eligible to recover. Yeah, yeah. Well, the university has a policy, at least here, that we do seek indirect costs and there's a certain percentage that we seek. And I guess the policy is, unless the sponsor specifically says that they do not support the indirect costs, then we ask for it. And we're required, university policy requires every investigator to ask their external sponsor for that. And then if the sponsor comes back and says, well, we won't do it or whatever, then we enter into sort of a negotiation process to see what we can do. But for those sponsors that specifically say they do not support indirect costs, then we don't eliminate those opportunities. We still allow those to go through. So we do our best to get the indirect costs. And yes, there are certainly indirect costs that are associated with these grant awards and research that's done with them. So we do ask for it, and there is a policy in place that we ask for it in every instance, except for when the sponsor specifically says they will not support that. And we don't eliminate that opportunity, though. We, we still allow investigators to go for those pots, too. How far do you get involved with things like eligibility criteria? Because as we both know, you can find programs and you can set your filters to narrow the scope of the things that you're going after. But the devil's in the details. If you don't get into the program announcement, very often you're not going to know all the nuances of, of what you can apply for, should apply for, the requirements. Because the database will only get you so far, right? At some point you need to dive into the specifics of the opportunity to see if there's a fit there. Do you assist with that or is that something that once you find the opportunity, you pass it over and let them dig through that? Yeah. Well, I, I think I certainly am here to help an investigator as they're looking through it. And I certainly do get questions sent to me saying, what does this mean? And do I, am I eligible or whatever? And I'm always glad to help them figure that out or work with the sponsor to help them figure it out. I do say now when I uh, promote the database, I'm telling investigators how to use them, that just because they fill out everything to a T when they set up their search criteria does not mean that every opportunity that comes up is going to be a good match. In fact, my experience has been almost 100% that they're going to pull up more irrelevant stuff than relevant stuff. The way the databases work is, you know, you have, you're going to pull up a, a pool of opportunities that in one way or another meet your criteria, but then, like you say, you're going to have to go through some weeding process. The name of the game to efficiently use the funding databases is to learn how to quickly go down through that short list of title sponsor and target the ones that sound like their possibilities and then drill down, find out more of the sum summarized information, and then from that, we either decide to track it or not to track it. And I think the more you use the tools, the more you see the value in that. You don't want to narrow down your chances of opportunities to the point where you're going to be missing some because you're so focused. And yet you want to be focused enough that you're not pulling in seven to 800 opportunities that, that you're going to have to weed through. So it's, it's sort of a little bit of an art more than a science. I still hear from seasoned researchers I'm not a researcher, but I have heard from researchers who are very successful at 
finding and getting grants, that these funding databases and electronic resources are the best way to go about finding a sponsor. And so that encourages me to be able to say to investigators, these are good tools and it will be worth your while to use them and to learn how to use them. This has been fantastic, Hilda. I hope you're willing to do another one of these if uh, time permits or there's things that are topicals. Thanks again. This is fantastic. All right, Eddie. Thanks for asking.